Jesus mighty name we have prayed. Can we clap our hands together to Jesus and please be seated in God's presence. We thank the Lord for the grace that we have received from him so far. We've been looking at a subject for some weeks now try to dealing with the foxes and a lot has been said this is one of the series that even as a pastor I have seriously enjoyed not just enjoy them, looked into them, learned vital lessons, and um, applied them to my personal life. The Word of God is not just meant to be preached, for people to be excited, or to just hear something. The word of God is principally preached for practical applications. And the amount of words that you have heard alone is not what will affect a change in your life. The, the word that you've been able to apply is what we bet the required changes and bring the blessings. And so this morning we are going to be looking into that topic again. And so interesting. I think last week my son taught on a very beautiful subtopic of that that is dealing with the fox of unforgiveness. And while I was trying to move to another thing, the Lord said to me, You are still going to look at that subject of unforgiveness. So, I don't know why the Spirit is placing a very serious emphasis on that. Sons of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 15. That's where we pick our take from. Thick us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil all the vines for our vine have tender grapes you see one activity of the fox there that the fox spoils the vine no matter how beautiful the vine appears once a fox steps in Spoils it. If a fox steps into a business, he steps, he destroys it, he spoils it. A fox steps into a gathering, a ministry, he spoils it. He steps into a family, he spoils it. That same scripture from the Good News translation. That same scripture from the Good News translation. Look at how he put it. He said, Catch the foxes, the little foxes, before they ruin our vineyard. Before they ruin our vineyard. So before 
for these foxes ruin your life deal with them before they ruin that beautiful destiny catch them and deal with them don't wait until when they are finished working I think they said prevention is better than kill catch them on time and deal with them on time so if for example we have talked about the fox called anger what the scripture is saying is deal with that anger before that anger destroy something because after if you or if you allow that fox to destroy you might not be able to handle it again you might not be able to handle it again and so like i said we are looking at unforgiveness again please let's reduce all this movement Unforgiveness is one of the most powerful weapon that Satan uses to destroy great destinies. Unforgiveness is one of the most powerful weapons that Satan uses to destroy great destinies. What cancer is to the human body is what unforgiveness is to the human spirit. Say it again. What cancer is to the human body is what unforgiveness is to the human spirit. We therefore can conclude that unforgiveness is a killer disease. Is a killer disease. It kills when you hear that a man has cancer, what comes to your heart is the same thing that should come to your heart when you hear that somebody avoids unforgiveness. As a matter of fact, if you have unforgiveness in you, you should know that that is cancerous to your being. And that's why I agree with that man that says unforgiveness is like putting a poison in your own food and expecting someone else to die. I have discovered you can't abhor unforgiveness in your life and move forward in life. In fact, if the devil wants to stagnate any man, he gives him a lot of people to offend him so he can keep them. Now, everyone, every athlete will tell you that one of the things they, they must do to aid their speed is to reduce weight. They must reduce weight. That's why everything they wear to run, they factor the weight of what they wear. 
to run whatever risk they have to run. Now, the same way unforgiveness adds to your weight. It slows down your pace in life. It adds to your weight. 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 Let us therefore lay aside the sin and the weight that easily beset us. So there are weights that man carries that slows them down in life. And listen to me, when you carry too much, you can't move again. So you see people that carry unforgiveness for 10 people, 20 people, 50 people. One is too much. How much more? Five. One is too much. Let your heart and conscience be void of offense towards God and towards men. You know, Joseph gave us a secret. If you look at Genesis 41, 51, and 52, I believe. What is more worse than for your own brothers to conceive the idea of killing you? I mean your own blood brothers. Now, this is not um, an outsider. Your own blood brother from the same father. And they conceive an idea of eliminating you, terminating your life. And you got to know. I mean, you got to know. What is more worse than that? And because God will not allow them to do that, they now decided to sell him. They sold him and they collected the money. Only God knows what they used that money to do. The Bible didn't tell us. They sold their own brother and collected the money. And years passed. The Bible said that they came to Egypt where God has now changed the life of Joseph. Now listen to me. When people hurt you, your response should be the response of Jesus. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. You see, your response should not be abhorring unforgiveness because each each offense or each things that people do to you that you think is bad in a way is moving you forward. Jesus said if they had known they would not have crucified. So if they are crucifying you it is because there is something they don't know. So he said, Father, forgive them because they don't know. And that was why Paul was saying, how we know that all things work together for good. Listen to me. There are things that people did to me some years back that today I'm thanking God that they did those things because if they had not done those things, I would not have taken some of the steps that I took that brought me to where I am. Joseph had moved. He 
If they have not sold Joseph, Joseph would not have gotten to Egypt. If they have not lied against Joseph, if Potiphar's wife had not lied against Joseph, Joseph would have been sent to the prison. If Joseph had not been in the prison, Joseph would not have met with the butler and the baker. And the baker. And if that has not happened, Joseph would not have found himself as a prime minister in Egypt. You see how that, that young man kept moving. And guess what? Do you know why God was moving Joseph like that? Because Joseph carried a spirit that easily forgives. He has a nature. And you will see that nature when he named his children. That's in Genesis 41, 51 and 52. He gave out to two children and he named the first one Manasseh. Named the second one Ephraim. What's the meaning of Manasseh? Manasseh means God had made me to forget my father's house. What's the meaning of that? Was it because Joseph didn't like his father's house? No. What he was saying is God had made me to forget what the sons of my father did to me. He made me forget. I forgot. And then he named the second child. He said, Ephraim. What's the meaning of Ephraim? I am now fruitful in this strange land. The meaning of that is connected together. If you don't know how to forget the evil that men do to you, you will never be fruitful. So your fruitfulness in life is tied to your ability to forgive and forget. Otherwise, you will not be fruitful. Are we together? I want to be fruitful. I want to advance. That was why the Bible says, when the brothers that sold him, when they met him, they couldn't recognize him. But he could recognize them. You know why? They couldn't recognize him because he had changed. He has, mo he has moved. But he could recognize them because they have not changed. Unforgiveness change you to your past. It changes you. Changes you to your past. Changes you to a spot. Changes you to a spot. No movement. Look at Colossians chapter 3, verse 13. Colossians chapter 3, verse 13. He said, Forbearing one another. Forbearing. Forbearing one another. And forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. You see, the only reason why you are permitted not to forgive is if you have not received forgiveness from God. He said forbearing because he knows you will offend each other. That's why he said forbearing, forbear. For beer. For bearing one another. Listen, I have discovered people that can for beer one another can go far. That's why when you see people that can for beer one another, they can't they they can't they can they can function well in a team. 
they can't function well in the team. They will always have one reason why they have to they kind of stay aloof for all. this one offend me, so I don't want any whatever. They can't run a team. And you see, most times they don't know that if they can't run a team, also team nobody can run with them also. Nobody will want. You see, this thing is like a circle. It's like a circle. People's eyes are not closed. When they see you, that there's a there's this there's this spirit in you that that wants to separate, that wants to work, whatever. The day you will also need people, nobody will be there for you. Is 
place of unforgiveness. And she carried it for many years. We only see people smile. We see each other smile. Underneath that smile are issues that many people bottle up. So a lot of people bottle up unforgiveness against themselves. Why? Because of the mistake you made some years ago. Something you did some years ago. If you look at the content of the prayer that Samson prayed, oh, somebody was captured. A strong man like that was captured. Dealt with him, removed his eyes, and then, while in that position, Samson understood that God can still rescue him. He knew God can still do something. Now, he knew God can still restore him. That was what the Bible says. And the hair of Samson grew again. You know, they cut the hair. Is that not what they did? Because that was the secret of his strength. And the Bible said, his hair grew again. If his hair grew again, why can't his eyes come back again? But you know the prayer of Samson. He says, strengthen me this once and let me die with them. You know why Samson prayed that prayer? Because Samson couldn't forgive himself. He couldn't forgive himself. That, ah, ah. God told me now. This woman asked me the first time. I saw what she did. She asked me the second time. I saw what she did. She asked me the third time. Was I that foolish? Ah, I'm not supposed to leave. And then she said, let me die with them. Just forgive me this one, this one time. Just forgive me this one time. And let me die with them. He couldn't just forgive himself. Now listen to me. I'm, I'm, I don't know why God is talking about this. But I, 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 I think I can, my heart can resonate with his heart. A young lady visited his, I mean, visited her friend who's a male guy. She had some restrictions not to go. She had some cautions not to go. But she decided to go. She went and incidentally, she was raped. And from that moment, she became a beast. Why? Because she couldn't forgive herself. Many times we go through things that we didn't plan for. And things happen. Time will not permit me. I will have analyzed the life of this woman that gave back to, what's the name of this woman that gave back to Ishmael? A guy. I will have shown you some of the statements that a guy said, said that shows that that young lady couldn't just forgive herself. Why? Now, look at that. Do you think it was a wish to marry Abraham? Do you think it was a wish? She was just a slave. Probably she has somebody in her mind that she wants to marry. But they just speak out against her wish. And just give her To Abraham against her wish. And that was why you will discover that she started reacting against Sarah. Because it wasn't against her wish. But guess what? 
all through her life, she just couldn't forgive herself for working in that family. Now, if I have not, if I if I didn't go there, I would have married somebody that I really wanted to marry. She just couldn't forgive herself. And listen.
that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble. Look at that. The first thing is they receive comfort. So because they have received it, it was very easy for them to do what? To give comfort by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. So if you have not received forgiveness and you have not forgiven yourself, it will be very difficult to forgive others. So when we talk about forgiveness, the first thing we should do is to look at ourselves first and ask ourselves, Don't, do I have any offense against myself? Have I been able to forgive myself? When you see, or how do you know if you are battling with self-unforgiveness? Number one, you have self-hatred. You will hate yourself. Self-hatred. Self-hatred. You will hate yourself. self-condemnation. You condemn yourself. You condemn yourself. Self-condemnation. Remember, look up. I remember something here. Um, there was a time, I think it was Absalom, that uh, plotted against David, his father. And David was trying to run out of the city. And then there's this man, Shimei or something like that. They saw him and he started casting stones and cursing him. He was cursing David and he was casting stones. And I think, is it Abishai? Abishai said to David, he said, this uncircumcised dog, let me at once kill him. And Abishai, you, you study those guys. Those guys are terrible guys. In fact, one of them, one of one of David's army, the Bible was describing them. He said, he, they can target a strain of hair and shoot at it and get a strain of hair. Those guys are dangerous. So he said, let me kill him once and whatever. You know what David said? David said, let him curse me. Because the Lord has said to him that he should curse me. Let him curse me. Because the when was David there when God told him? You know why he said that? Because he had self-condemnation. Because the Lord has said to him that he should curse me. David was, David looked at everything he did. He looked at what he did to Bathsheba. He looked at, so he, he just concluded, God is paying me back. Listen, God is not paying you anything back. He's not paying you anything back. God does not pay with evil. Forget it. He's not paying you. You have self-condemnation. Number three, you have low self-esteem. You have low self-esteem. Number four, you have ardent heart. Some people have ardent heart. Their heart has become tough. They feel they have done a lot that God cannot even forgive them. And because of that, if God cannot forgive me, so why? So, let's just, let's just continue. Their heart become hardened and toughened. Some of them enter into depression. Depression. Because you 
couldn't forgive yourself. And the moment you can't forgive yourself, you can't forgive others. And after some time, you discover that you are you are alienated, secluded. You are yourself. And the moment that set in, depression will set in. I was talking to my friend the other time, and he told me, he said, Pastor, do you know that even a lot of the people we have in the Bible suffered from this depression? So I said, why? I said, I don't know. He said, why do you think Moses got to a point and he said, Father, kill me? He said, it is depression. Elijah also got to that point, Father, kill me. I'm not better than my father. That's depression. Moses, David came to a point, I think maybe Psalm 56 or something. He said, I wish I have wings and fly away into the desert and I be there alone. That's depression. Number six, of course, very hard to forgive others. Very hard. God blessing someone. That's why there are some there are some satanic teachings that is going on. Many years ago, I'm sure my wife will still remember now. Many years ago, we are not married yet, and uh, I visited her, and she told me about one revival. Somebody came to their church to do one revival. Very, very. She was telling me how powerful the revival was. So I asked her, what, what are the content of the things that was shared? She said, that man said that um, uh, anybody who, who had aborted, that they don't have forgiveness at all. They said that the children that they aborted, he now went to go and quote the scripture. The way the Bible said they are, the children are crying. He said they are waiting for them in heaven, crying. There is no so I told her, I said, if there's no forgiveness, why are they doing revival? Yeah, that is just if there's no forgiveness, then why are they doing revival? If there's no forgiveness, why are you calling people to come and give their life to Jesus? People are in bondage, they are looking for a way out, and the gospel is the way out, and that you are now turning the gospel again to be another bondage. My friend, listen to me. There's no child in heaven crying any cry. There's no child in heaven crying any cry. The Bible says, the time of ignorance God overlooked. He winked at. Is that a permission to say no? He overlooked. You know what the Bible says? He said, if God begins to mark iniquity, if he begins to mark it, even me that I carry microphone, I can't stand it. If he's marking it, if he's marking it, if you read your Bible very well, you will thank God for grace. Oh, because some of this we do now, you do it, God kill you on the altar state. Do you know that if you wear a singlet that is not clean to the holy of holies, you are dead already. If I ask every one of us to off our, our singlets now. Am I preaching something? God overlooked. So I said, what's the essence of the revival? What, what is it? Where did he get that? Where? Where? They are crying. It's crying, crying. Somebody preached one message one day. That thing, that, hit, that thing hit me. Even me too. I was, I was, I was. It's not because I offended you. Okay, I won't say it so that. Because the way you are looking at me, it will. But after some time, when I sat with the word of God, I said, these things. You know, in Africa, we believe in scary messages. We believe that
that people won't repent if we have not scared them. That's why they talk about hell, 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 hell. They have not talked about how heaven looks like. The beautiful stones of heaven. And listen to me, what you keep hearing in your heart gravitate towards. So if you are hearing hell, 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 your heart will just begin to gravitate towards hell. You heard what that lady said yesterday. I was hearing it from house. When the lady said uh, somebody smoking or uh, taking whatever I said, he was quoting scripture as they were, and somebody said, do you know that there's a place fire, or call fire hell, and whatever, they said, ah, that's where we are going. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's not, it's whatever. Because it's like, it, what, is, what they have said, they have condemned, they have condemned, oh, but what? Show me something better. I don't have time. Please let me, I, I need to touch, let, let me run this to off. Is God blessing somebody? Please look at yourself again. Say, I forgive myself. I forgive. I forgive myself. Some of you, because you did, you couldn't pass pass work once. That's why you 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 hold you hold it against yourself. So what about some of us that wrote it like seven times? Perfection. <laughs> forgive yourself. Listen to me. Never allow your mistake to define you. Now, mistake is from two words. Mistake. It just means that you miss your take. If you miss your take, take it again. Take it again. Take it again. You made that mistake the first time, correct it and move on. The first thing you need to do to be out of self unforgiveness is number one, accept in your heart that God has nothing against you. God has nothing against you and he holds nothing against you. As long as you have repented, I think I need to say that. Once you have repented, God holds nothing against you. I mean against you. Romans chapter 8 verse 1. Romans 8 verse 1. He said, there is therefore, let's read Romans 8 1. I like that scripture. Romans 8 1. Okay, some of us can read it offhand. Eh? I don't want you to read it offhand. That's the one you can read offhand. Okay, read Job chapter 5 verse 26. Read it. Uh-huh. Praise God. Look at that. He said, There is therefore what? I can't hear you. There is therefore what? Somebody say now. Say say now. You see, now that you are in Christ, there is therefore no condemnation. No condemnation against them which are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. There is no con God is not holding anything against you. No condemnation. As far as God, see, many of the times you are the one reminding God the sins he has forgiven and he has forgotten. You are the one reminding God. Ah, Father, you know that 1991 I stole one meat. And I think that was why this thing is happening to me. My friend, somebody came to me and told me, oh, sir, I have this challenge. There's this, this challenge. So I said, oh, let's pray. And he said, wait a minute. I know the reason why this thing is happening. I said, what is the reason? He said, when I was in secondary school, and he started telling me the story, 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 story. I did this, I did this, I did it. In fact, he had pointed about seven to eight things he did. 
I said, you mean it? God didn't remember. Ah, he said, no, God cannot forget. <laughs> I said, you can know whether you forget or not. How do you know if God has not forget, forgotten? I said, the only way we can know is the scripture. So let's check the scripture. One of my daughters came to me, they brought her to me, and uh, she told me how that even herself, she can't do without sex a day. Young girl. How did it happen? A neighbor started sleeping with her when she was, I think, 10, 11. And did that continuously for about four years. So now, it has become something else to herself. So she said, she said by herself that she can't even do herself. She'll be looking around for a guy. In fact, she told me one, one, one serious whatever. She said one day she was looking around like that and she saw some guys, uh, uh, this bricklaying, whatever. And she went to meet one of them and uh, talked to one of them like that. And that was how the guy slept with her. People go through issues. So you look at that, you think that is what she wants to do by herself. No. And she held that against herself. So I preached the gospel. I said, have you given your life? She said, many times, but I still do it. I said, don't worry. Now, can you give your life to Christ now? She said, okay, there's no problem. You, you, need, to see her, you need to see how she was. You need to see that audacity, that whatever. Then I led her to Christ. When I, finish, when I led her to Christ, I now said to her, I said, do you know that now you are a virgin? She laughed. She laughed. She said, Pastor, didn't you hear what I just told you? You know, we can, hear, we can laugh like that. But listen to me. I said to her, I said, yes. I said, humanly speaking, you are not. But as far as God is concerned, I said, he sees you as a virgin. I said, nothing has happened to you. Ah, she said, no, I can't believe it. And I said, do you believe the Bible? If you can't believe me, can you believe it? She said, yes. I, I opened to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18. I read it to her. Listen to me. I'm telling you, as I was reading that scripture, she started shedding tears. I said, now you are a new creature. All things are passed away. God forgave. He forgot. What do you have against yourself? She cried. It wasn't even crying. She bled. She cried. And guess what? That day marks the end of that. She came here one day and she was sharing her testimony. Many of you, you don't understand. And from that point, she carried herself with dignity until the night of her wedding. And you know what? God now blessed her with a wonderful brother. What do you have against yourself? What? There are some of us that prove this righteous, 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 and yet there's no movement. Can you forgive yourself? Can you let go? I've bled a lot into the second service. Let's bow down our heads. Let's bow down our heads. You know, Jesus said, 
come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavily laden. What is he saying? There are many of us we carry the weight of unforgiveness. Say to God, Lord, I receive your forgiveness today. I receive your forgiveness. And Father, every weight of unforgiveness in my heart, lift them this morning by your mercy, by your grace. Lift them this morning. Lift them off my heart this morning. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying.